Hey, so what's your full name? Thomas Gordon Johnson. Do you know why your parents selected that name for you? I don't. You don't know? Mm -hmm. I don't, because I'm not named after anybody. Okay. Okay. Did you have any nicknames? Yeah. They called me TJ. TJ? TJ when I was young. Who's they? All my friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. When and where were you born? I was born in Niagara Falls at the old hospital, which is now a Salvation Army retirement home down on Jepson Street in 1951, May 28th. Down on Jepson Street? Jepson Street, down, down in the old six of Niagara Falls. Okay. And how did your family come to live in Niagara Falls? Well, my father's family was here, but they came from, uh, my grandfather on my father's side came from Port Credit, mm -hmm. on the Credit River, that's where he was born, and my mom's side came from Ottawa, but I'm sure they're from Quebec someplace because they're all um, French, Okay, French Canadians. Were there other family members in the area? Is that why they came here? Do you know why? One of my parents settled yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah, all his brothers and sisters were here. Well, his sister wasn't. His sister was out in Manitoba, but all his brothers were here. Okay. What were they doing? Well, one brother, Ross, the oldest, he worked at Gen General Motors. I think he was... Uh, it's still going. I think he was an um, uh, architect or draftsman. His next brothers, uh, Chet and Roy, their real name was Block, and my grandmother adopted them, but they were real brothers. So they were my uncles, Uncle Chet and Uncle Roy, and then there was Dad, and he met Mom in Ottawa when he was in the Navy, Oh, yeah, didn't know that. and they came back to Niagara Falls to live. Oh, and then there was, um, who was next? Uh, David, Uncle David. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they're all deceased now. Uh, yeah, they're all gone now. Hmm. What was uh, your child home, childhood home like? Where was it? Did you move around a lot? Uh, no, no. I moved to, I was born uh, downtown. We lived on 6th Avenue, second house in from the street that goes into the old badminton club, which is still there. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of us were born there. And then my dad... Um, Rented. He worked for Uniroyal at the time. He had a Uniroyal store down downtown, and then he went into business with Mr. Forgy to uh, open a hardware store called Forgy Johnson Hardware. So we rented a house, uh, a big old two-story house that was where Sobeys is now on Portage Road. Mm. So we rented that for a while till my dad got on his feet, and. Uh, while we were in the store, uh, soon after we rented the house, Dad bought a house in Cherrywood Acres on Nancy Drive. Um, I think the number was 699 Nancy Drive. 599 mm -hmm. Nancy Drive. And then he sold that to actually to go into business, and uh, that's when we rented the house. So I'm a little bit ahead, ahead of myself. And then after he got on his feet and uh, had a few years under his belt, he got a VLA lot, which was a veteran's lot. Cool. It was a, a two-acre parcel. Uh, that's what they were given the veterans that were in the war. And he built a home out on Garner Road. He built that home? Yeah. Okay. He built that home. Since then, somebody's bought it and added a two-car garage to it. Oh, we just went by it the other day. It's beautiful. They redid the front and everything now. Did they? Yeah. Oh, I haven't been by in a while. Yeah, we just drove by it. It's a bungalow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the two cars. Yeah, no, I remember the that shed's house. still out in the back. I remember that house. Yeah, okay. And all we did was cut grass. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun at first. You know, you get to ride a tractor, but after a while, it was a pain in the butt because nobody wanted to do it. Yeah. Uh, and then shortly after we moved into uh, Garner Road, um, I left and married your mom. Okay. So I was only there for about four months. And Jeff was born out there. Was born out there? Well, he, yeah, yeah, that's where they brought him home from the hospital out there. Yeah. yeah. So when you think about your the earlier houses, how did they change? Did they have electricity? Did they have indoor plumbing? Did they have all those things when you were really young? 
when I was really young, we used to have uh, on Sixth Avenue, we used to have the milkman come mm -hmm. with the bottles of milk, glass bottles of milk, dropped them at the front door. And uh, there used to be a bread man that used to come. Really? He used to be the guy that would bring the coal for the furnaces okay. and put it down the chute. Um, I'm not sure if we had a telephone there or not. I think the first telephone I remember was on Nancy Drive. And it was a party line, which means you shared the phone with somebody else. So if you picked up the phone and they were talking, it was the other people that you shared the line with. Oh, like neighbors? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. And if it was an emergency phone, you'd ask them, you know, would they please finish their conversation because you need to use the phone. And then once they got off, you got the dial tone. And our, our number was Elgin. Uh, Six one six six four was our <laughs> telephone number. I, that's funny. I I think I still remember our my first phone number or our first phone three five six two four five four. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was before they had to put in that yeah nine oh one or nine oh five and four oh one. Yeah. So we didn't have computers back then. No, we didn't have. We did have a TV. It was like a an oval screen. Oh yeah, and it was forever breaking down. It was the, a tube. The TV TV. Was. TV. <laughs> Guy around the corner, Mr. Copeland, he did service televisions on the side, and I bet you he was over there every other night replacing the tubes and the TV to get it working. Really? Yeah, and Mum would give him money as she got some money, and uh, he was really good to us, Mr. Copeland. It's funny how you wouldn't even think about that these days. No. The TV, if it breaks down, you get a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Were cars like that too? They're always breaking down. And... Uh, I don't remember. No, I don't remember. I just remember we always had a station wagon because we had so many kids. Yeah, yeah. So you had you had the indoor plumbing and everything, and you oh yeah, the telephone. Yeah, we've it. always had indoor plumbing that I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were there any special items in your house that you remembered? I remember the. Um, like a hope chest my mother had and we always used to sit on it when the photographer would come over and take our family pictures and I still have some pictures a couple of pictures at home where Bruce and I were on there getting our picture taken and then I think there's a picture around with Bruce and I and Mary Lou mm -hmm. which were the first three kids and uh, those are the things I remember the hope chest what color was it dark brown yeah it was a really nice it was like a veneer finish Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know where it is. Yeah, I was about to say, where is it? Yeah, I don't know if one of the girls has it or not. Probably, yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. Oak chest. So if you can think back. And these old flower drapes my mother used to have hanging on the walls. Did they come with you from house to house? No. No. Wh which house was that? That was in Garner? No, no. that was on... Uh, Nancy. Nancy and 6th Avenue. So maybe they did come from house to house. Yeah. <laughs> Now, why do you remember the drapes? Because they were so ugly. <laughs> okay. Big, big flowers. They were like points of the flowers on pattern on the drapes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm in the blind business today. Uh, make sure those nobody drapes. has those drapes anymore. Yeah. Oh, you got those drapes. Yeah, I can get rid of I those. I got to change those drapes in there one day. Okay. <laughs> Next. If you're thinking back, what's the earliest or most prominent memory that you can think of that you remember? That. Having our pictures taken, we were only four, three or four years old. Really? Yeah. So it, it, we, when you think back, was that a good experience or was that it was no? That was a great experience. Or, no, yeah. no, the other experience that I remember is um, when school was going to start. Mum would get a big box of clothes from Eaton's mm -hmm. that she ordered from the catalog, mm -hmm. which was like thicker than a phone book. You ordered all your clothes, and everything would come uh, just before school started. So we all had new clothes. Mom made sure we all had new clothes before we went to school. Right. And that was a, a task because you had... That was big because he had ready to see what was coming out next. That was for you in the box. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and and you were excited about it. You weren't going Especially my cowboy hat and guns and uh, Chris Kringle jacket. He was a character in one of the old Gunsmoke movies. And he had all the fringes hanging down. Oh, yeah. And I had one of those. They would, I think it was fake suede or something. <laughs> my favorite. Well, I almost got some uh, boots that had those. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, they still make them today. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, going now to your family members, what uh, what was your dad like? My dad? Yeah. Very passive. Okay. Explain very nice. Yeah. Very, 
very talkative, like me. Um, always spend a lot of time with the customers in the store. Mm -hmm. Was always at the store. Uh, they used to take us away once or twice a year up to my uncle's, his uncle's farm. Uncle Clarence and Aunt Mamie um, mm -hmm. around Godridge area. Mm -hmm. And that was our family vacation because with having so many kids, my dad couldn't afford to take us away too far. And uh, what was the question? Well, what was your dad like? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Always helped me out. Mm -hmm. Always helped all of us out. Mm -hmm. Always really good. Mm -hmm. You know, couldn't give us a lot, but gave us what he could. Mm -hmm. And uh, hardly got spanked. No, it was, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, he provided. Yeah, he was good. He was very good to us. Always took us for ice cream on Sundays. We always had the big meal on Sundays. And we'd go for a drive and get ice cream. And he'd always take us to bargaining. Mm -hmm. He loved to take us to bargaining. Where would you do that? Uh, Fireman's Park. Okay. We'd go to Fireman's Park all the time. That was the big alley. We'd go to here in Niagara Falls. Yeah. yeah, here in Niagara Falls. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, he did a lot. He used to pull us behind the car too on the toboggan, mm -hmm. which you can't do these days. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, he'd pull us with a big long rope. We'd all be on the toboggan <laughs> and he'd drive it down the road <laughs> just behind the car. In the station wagon, yeah? Yeah, yeah in the station wagon. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> How about your mom? She was always busy doing the house chores with eight kids. Mm -hmm. She wasn't cooking, she was cleaning. She was cooking. She looked after us, you know, clothes-wise, food-wise, um, making sure we looked good. Uh, she was a hard worker. She liked to sleep, though. She, she'd stay up late. She knitted everything. She knitted us toques, mitts, um, slippers, sweaters to wear outside in the wintertime. I remember mine had two beavers on it, two Canadian beavers and a big beaver on the back. Everybody got to pick the pattern they wanted, and she would knit. She would knit till two, three o'clock in the morning, but she wouldn't get up till 12, 12 one o'clock in the afternoon, because oh. she'd be up so late, and that's when she'd have her cigarette. Okay. When everybody's gone to bed, you couldn't see her smoking. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and your dad smoked too. My dad smoked too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so you have seven brothers and sisters. I have seven brothers and sisters. Okay. Let's uh, start with the oldest. It's uh, Bruce, right? Bruce. What's he like? What do you want me to say? We can talk about him. Talk about him as an unbiased as you can. What are, what are your good memories with Bruce? Bruce always used to like to um, blow my cars because he never had a car. I always had a car. I had a first my first car when I was thirteen, mm -hmm. and he'd always blow my cars because he didn't he didn't have one, didn't want to spend the money and go into debt for it. So every time he'd blow my car, something would be wrong with it. Like I remember when he brought it back, yeah. or when he took it, and then he complained to you. No, no, no. he'd take it, and I'd go out to jump in the car. I remember the one time I went out to jump in the car, and it opened the door, and it fell off to the ground. <laughs> oh no! I go in. I said, "What'd you do to my door?" He said, "Why? What's the matter with your door?" <laughs> I said, "Well, it just fell on the ground." <laughs> said the hinges are broken. Uh. Oh, yeah, he says, uh, we were playing uh, the Chinese fire drill where you stop at a stoplight and everybody runs around the car and then he gets back in the car before the light changes green again. Uh -huh. And one of the guys didn't get back in the car fast enough and he hit the door when they were backing up and, and it tore the door off. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then my dad used to borrow my car because I always had newer cars than anybody. Mm -hmm. And he did the same thing back out of the driveway with my Camaro and... And he had the door open, he's back in the driveway in the wintertime, and the door caught the snowbank and twisted the door back the wrong way and put a huge dent in my side. <laughs> and then another time I had an Austin Healy and it wouldn't start. And my dad was had all the kids in the car taking them to school and he was going to give me a push down the road. And he caved in the trunk of the car. Ooh. And... It didn't start. He pushed me all the way down the Garner Road. Still didn't start, so he left me there, and he sent one of the mechanics out. But in the meantime, I realized I forgot to switch the switch for the fuel pump. Oh. The fuel pump pulls the gas from the gas tank to the engine, so it would start. And that's all it was. But meanwhile, my trunk was already caved in. <laughs> and I just had it painted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. so, so Bruce would borrow your cars and bring them back broken. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah all the time. Yeah. yeah. And then there was Mary Lou. Yeah. She was there. What was she like? Her and I were the ones that used to clean the house. Okay. Because if we didn't clean the house, the uh, first thing my mother would do when she got up, if she saw the first person she saw, she'd start an argument with them or start to yell at them or something. We thought if we got the house clean and did everything before she got up, make the beds, wash the floors, stuff like that, she wouldn't yell at us. But she still did. But we still did it. We so did. what was Bruce doing if you guys were making the house? Out of sight. Out of sight. He was just gone. Go to his no help at all. No. No? No. <laughs> okay. So then there was Barb. Okay. Barb's the just younger than you, right? So the, the other... Mary Lou and Bruce are older than you? No. Mary Lou's younger than me. So Bruce? 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 Me. Yeah. Mary Lou. Okay. Then Barb. Okay. But then what's Barb like? Uh, I remember her as a big sleeper. Mm -hmm. She slept a lot. And she went out with her friends a lot. Very sociable. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the time she streaked through the cafeteria at high school. <laughs> she had a ski mask on, totally naked. Streaked through the cafeteria and into a van. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was her claim to fame. Yeah. And then there was Gloria. She was pretty small when I left home. And Nancy, they were pretty small when I left home. So I don't really have a lot of, you know, other than... They were there every time you went out there because they were small. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so how old would they have been when you were leaving home? I would say Nancy would have been. Uh, if I was eighteen, she would have been about ten or twelve. Okay. Gloria would have been about thirteen. Yeah. And then Suzanne came along. She was the. But you were already gone out of the house. And Sue was born? No, Sue was at the house. So was Jeff. Mm -hmm. Jeff was only at the house four months when I left. No, four years old when I left. Because mm -hmm. I remember when I got married, he was hanging on the side of the door and wanted to come with us on the honeymoon. Couldn't figure out why I wasn't coming home. So, <laughs> so when you got married, you were still living at the house? And then the honeymoon, then you moved out? or how, Yeah. How did that work? Yeah. No, uh, yeah, yeah, that's how it worked. Yeah, mm -hmm. then I moved out after we got married. Okay. Yeah. And then Jeff going, where you, you're not coming home. <laughs> yeah, Jeff couldn't figure out why I wasn't coming home. Okay. Okay. And so, yeah, they were all kind of just little kids running around. Yeah, yeah. so today, I, I don't know where Gloria lives. I'm thinking she's South Korea. Really? And I think so, because nobody's heard from her. Uh, somebody did get an email from her boyfriend or something, and it's, I think it gave them the idea that they're in South Korea. Mm -hmm. Nancy's in Peterborough. Mm -hmm. Suzanne's now retired. Is she retired? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. From the Sea Wing? Yeah, unwillingly, but okay. uh, she's retired, and they gave her a pension. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey works for Niagara Hotels for the DCNCS. Okay. And Bruce is retired from Bruce is the retired fire from the fire department. Uh -huh. And Mary Lou is She only works one day a week. She's retired too. She works for um, Scuttlebutt's, the restaurant. Oh, yeah. Or Julianne. Or Julianne, okay. Her daughter. Mm hmm Yeah. So, when you were little, what kind of games did you used to play? Uh, we used to play a lot of hide and go seek. Mm -hmm. We used to play in the leaves. My father used to make big piles of leaves, and we used to hide in the leaves. Mm -hmm. We used to go to the Univall store when my dad had the Univall store before he went into the hardware business. What's, what's Univall? Tire, tires, tires, okay. tire tires. Yeah. And uh, he'd go to work. He'd go to work there on a Saturday, or Sunday, which they weren't open, but. He would play hide and go seek with us. He'd put us in the big pile of tires so we wouldn't mm. hide and the other kids couldn't find us. And he used to do that at the hardware store too. He'd put mm. us up on the shelf or in a, in a laundry basket so they, nobody could find us. He was great with play games. <laughs> he liked to play for He liked to work. Yeah. Yeah. So he did that with us a lot. A lot of hide and seek. A lot of hide and go seek, guns, bow and arrows. Then I got a pellet gun. Then I go out and hunt. Uh, um, Would you really sparrows. hunt or yeah, you'd hunt no, sparrows? Just, just shoot sparrows, yeah. 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 <laughs> Not to bring home, just to, just to kill them. Yeah, just to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That was what we did. Uh -huh. Did you have a certain toy or anything that, other than your guns and stuff that you've mentioned that 
was, oh, that was my favorite. We used to do a lot of models, put model cars together and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Because yeah. my dad sold model cars, and uh, all of a sudden there'd be one in my bedroom that I'd be putting together, painting or putting decals on it or gluing it together. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of model cars way mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. So you've always liked cars, and Grandpa's always liked hardware and tires and things and like kid, that. And kids. And what's that? Kids. And kids. Grandpa loved kids. Yeah. yeah. Whether they were his or not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so the, the models, did you have one model that was one of your favorites that you remember distinctly? That this it was a model of? No, I had all the current cars like the Mustangs, Camaros. Um, old Chevys. Um, um, there was a favorite one. It was a Willys. A Willys. Um, a Willys. Oh, what was it? It was like a two door coupe. It was about a 48, 47 Ford. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of my favorite cars. Mm -hmm. Never had one. No. No, I had a 48 Ford. That was my first car mm -hmm. when I was 13. Only could drive at night, so cops wouldn't see you. Yeah. How small you were. Then I tinted the windows on it so they couldn't see in the car. Yeah. But back then, you could buy spray tint uh -huh. for paint tire and you spray the windows, tint your windows, but I didn't have the knack for doing it. And I'd spray the windows and then it would run. So I'd wait for it to dry and I'd put another coat on and it would run. And then I'd put another coat on and it would run. And then it was so dark you couldn't see out or in. <laughs> Nobody's seeing who it is. <laughs> <laughs> a little, yeah. little unsafe. Yeah. yeah. We used to, I used to keep it out in the barn out in Garner Road before we moved out there because I didn't want my parents to know I had a car. Oh, really? And um, <laughs> So you had a car and they had no idea? No. I was just about to say, you know, your parents. No, but they didn't drive it too often, so every time we went to get it, it wouldn't start. So we'd have to push it to get it started. Yeah. Because it was manual. I three speed on the column. Yeah. I don't know if you ever remember those. No, I don't. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So we had to push it to get it started. But it always started. It's yeah. a flathead eight. Yeah. And then, and so where'd you get the money to buy a car like that? It was only like three or four hundred bucks. Yeah, but that's a lot of money back I bought then. It, I bought it from Howard Little John's grandmother. Mm -hmm. Fellow that married Barb. Okay. Bought it from his grandmother. 48 Ford. Cool. And where'd you get the money? Like, how'd you earn that money? I saved it. From what though? In the wintertime, I always shovel driveways by hand. Mm -hmm. All the neighbors and everything got money. In summertime, I cut grass and cut hedges and swept up and cleaned up around people's homes. Mm -hmm. So I was always making money. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I saved my money and bought it. So maybe my, I borrowed some from my dad, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. He didn't know what it was for. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about that you like to play hide and seek and you like to play with the cars and stuff. Did you do any of the other things that were, like, other than the trip and stuff, any other things that you really liked to do? Did you go to the beach ever, or did you go to any other no, places? Or... No, we didn't start going to the beach until we got the trailer and we were out there with you guys. Mm -hmm. And you guys were small. Mm -hmm. No, I don't remember going to the beach. Movies? Or... Yeah, that was a treat, mm -hmm. going to the movies, because you didn't go too often. Mm -hmm. um, we worked you... off an island swimming all the time. Yeah. That's where we always swim. Now there's no swimming allowed down there yeah. at all. No. No. It was all a mucky bottom too. Yeah, yeah. And you hated to put your feet down. <laughs> so, so then they paved, they concreted the one big area there for people to swim, but now it's all banned. But we used to swim in the old section where it was still the muddy bottom because it was deeper. Mm -hmm. And you could run and dive in there. And uh, so we used to bike down there almost every day mm. in the summertime. When you say we, who would that be? Me and Bruce and uh, <coughs> Ward Egan, uh, I think Dave Jacklin used to come with us. But on the way down there, there used to be a big arcade underneath the Rainbow Bridge, mm -hmm. where there was a, a, like a soda fountain place where you go in and get french fries and hamburgers and hot dogs and stuff like that. And they had all kinds of penny arcade uh, um, uh, pinball machines. Mm -hmm. So my brother would go and play. Well, before we got there, we'd stop at, the, there's a big fountain there where you throw money in to, to make wishes. Mm -hmm. We'd go in, because we already had our bathing suits on, we'd go inside the fountain, scoop out as much money as we could, and then we'd head down below where the soda fountain was in the arcades and spend all the money we just scooped out of the fountain. 
and they'd spend all their money on, on pinball machines, which I wasn't interested in. And I would sit up at the bar and have French fries and hamburgers and milkshakes and stuff like that. And then we'd go down to Duff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned already that uh, you would cut grass and you would uh, shovel driveways and you would clean the house. Was Did you have any other chores that were expectations? Like cleaning the house, was that you would do that because you were expected to do that or you did that because you just didn't want to get in trouble? Or mm -hmm. Did you have we other chores that you were expected to do? Yeah. 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 Okay. But it wasn't there. I was over at the store working. At working at the store. Yeah. At the hardware store. At the hardware yeah. store. Yeah. I loved working there. Yeah. And so when you were working, were you stocking shelves? Were you selling things? Were you doing both, everything? Both. Yeah. When it was open, I'd be selling stuff and helping out. And when it was closed, I'd be uh, putting orders away for Dad and making sure everything was unboxed and put away and priced and stuff like that. And we did that just to save him a lot of work, mm -hmm. which we did. Mm -hmm. Dave Chapman worked there and I did. Oh, okay. And then when Dad wasn't around, he'd always keep a little kitty 30 bucks until for the next day we'd always take a few bucks and go across the street to the chimney restaurant because Dave and I both love fish and chips. And I thought, well, gee, Dad can afford to pay us enough for fish and chips. But every time he knew there was money missed, we'd say we bought fish and chips. He'd get mad at us. <laughs> We're spending about six bucks, five yeah. or six bucks, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we loved our fish and chips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... But he he would pay you, or you would just take that money, and that was kind of, it was given that you were going to take that money, or you got a certain allowance or something. Out I of got that. forty bucks a week for working. Forty bucks a week. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty went to my mother for room and board. Oh really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. She took it, made sure she got her twenty. Mm -hmm. Did she do that from with all the kids? It was only me and Mary Lou that worked there. Bruce okay. the odd time, but. Just me and Mary Lou actually worked there. Was Bruce already working at the, as a firefighter, or what was he doing? No, Bruce was <clears throat> lazy. Just was lazy? Yeah, he didn't work there very often. No? No, he okay. didn't help out that much. Okay. He'd always have something he had to do, or go and play with his friends, or whatever. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, what what about school? What was that like for you? I hated school. I hated, I hated school. school. Where did you go to school? I went, I started a kindergarten at, uh, actually I started a kindergarten. My dad did move up to Simcoe. We moved up to Simcoe for about a year because he was running a, a universal store up there. And that's where I started school in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So I went to kindergarten for a year and then we moved back to Niagara Falls. And um, um, that's where I had my first girlfriend in kindergarten in Simcoe. Her name was Melissa Hunter. Mm -hmm. And um, then we moved back to Niagara Falls, and I started grade one. And I did grade one through grade six at John Marshall, which is gone now. The school is there. It's a new school, but the old school was built, uh, um, was where the playground is. The new school is where the playground was. So I was in like a three-story school. Um, I went to through grade one through grade six. Okay. Hated school. Always getting a strap. Really? Yeah. Oh, they had the strap? Yeah, they got the strap. So what would you get the strap for? Well, I, the one time I did remember, I got the strap for letting air out of uh, Charmaine Peters' tires in her bike. <laughs> why? Do you know why you let the air out of her tires? I think I was mad at her or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let the air out it must have taken some time to get the... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> did uh, was there anything in school that you liked? Was there a certain subject that you did like? Art. Or art. Art. I liked art. Okay. Um. Yeah. What did you used to draw, or what did, or were you a painter, or what, what did you used to like? No to drawing. Do? I like drawing. Yeah. I used to be a good, not a bad drawer. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There was a couple of teachers I really liked. There, there was a, a when I got my first man teacher, his name was Alec Romanowicz. I really <clears> liked him because he was a man, as opposed to having all these women teachers. Mm -hmm. So I think he was grade five or six. Mm -hmm. And I guess I kind of liked school a lot because I did every grade twice. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> all those twice, not every grade. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't like school. Okay. And when I got to high school, I used to love to get kicked out of school because then I could go over to the hardware store and work. Oh. And my dad would never say, 
What are you doing at school? He'd just be like, okay. He knew I got kicked out, but he needed me in the store, too. Oh, okay. So he wouldn't say anything, so he wouldn't, uh, he'd always write the note to go back to work, or back to school. Yeah. Yeah. And where'd you, where'd you go to, so you went, John Marshall? One, six, uh, Mar John Marshall, where'd you oh, go? Oh, then I went to grade seven and eight at, um, used to be called, um, NSCBI? No, no. no. Um, uh, Princess Elizabeth. Princess Elizabeth. Where's that? Where was that? It's now um, the Julia Lamarche. Uh, it's a French school now. Oh, okay. John, it's on uh, Drummond there. John Drummond. Okay. Beside the Bingo Hall, which used the Bingo Hall used to be a Beaver Lumber. Oh, okay. Lumber store until Dave Jacklin burned it down. Really? <laughs> on purpose or by mistake? Smoking. Smoking. <laughs> really? Oh no. <laughs> And after that, they rebuilt it, but not as a hardware store, or not as a lumber yard. They, it was, became bingo hall. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And I remember Grandma used to like bingo. Huh. In, yeah. in a lot of years, yeah. 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 Okay. Bingo halls and uh, Timmy's. Oh, really? That was her social life. Bingo halls and Timmy's. Yeah. Okay. Huh. <laughs> and I used to go see her at the bingo hall, eh? Because she'd be playing, and go, Hey, Ma, you win it? And she'd have like about eight or ten cards out with her Dab. marker dabber. Yeah. And then before I'd leave, I'd yell, Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Shut no. up! Uh, so then you went to Princess Elizabeth, and then where'd you go to high school? I went, started at Meyer, mm -hmm. till I got kicked out. Okay. Then I went to West Lane, mm -hmm. till okay. I got kicked out. Yeah. And I didn't go back to school. Started on started working. So how high'd you go? Grade ten, eleven, twelve? Nine. I started ten a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Past grade ten. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I passed grade ten or not. Did you uh did don't you do show any? this to anybody, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm proud of the education I don't have. Okay. What about, uh, did you do any sports or any extracurriculars or anything at school? When I was a young boy, I played hockey. My mm -hmm. dad used to have us in the league. So we used to play hockey. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't play a lot of sports because I, I had asthma too bad. Mm -hmm. So I had, uh, asthma stopped me from playing a lot of sports because I couldn't. I loved to run. I loved to do the relays and the long distance and stuff. But I couldn't do it for very long because I had asthma too bad. But I was a really fast runner. <coughs> mm -hmm. Not like I am today, but no. uh, yeah, and then so sports kind of went by the wayside. Mm. But um, so tell me about when you were younger, any of the major fads or things that uh, people were fads, were, yeah. Oh boy, back in the psychedelic days, yeah, back in the 60s when everybody were hippies. Were you, were you a hippie or were you, yeah, one of the, yeah, I had long shoulder length hair, yeah, big long beard. Um, yeah, did a little, little smoke on marijuana, a few other things. <laughs> Not that I'm proud of today, but I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. So, um. So the hippies were the big thing. Yeah, right? Volkswagen Beetles were the big thing to did drive. You, did you have one of those? Yeah. I did had you? A beetle. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What color was it? Beige. A beige beetle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what else did we do? Mm-hmm. Everybody used to wear the the blue round glasses, sunglasses. Oh, like, like John Lennon. Exactly. Okay. That's where everybody started getting that fad from. Was from him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, I guess long hair was in, smoking pot was in, hanging out with the undesirables, driving a hot car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice Pontiac all souped up. Yeah. yeah. So the long hair and, and then what kind of clothes were people wearing? Bell bottom pants. Yeah. Um, psychedelic and the and the tie dyed shirts, which mm -hmm. I didn't like. I never wore them. No. Um, the glasses, uh, long cashmere coats, mm -hmm. pea jackets. What's a pea jacket? P jacket is like a double breasted with buttons down both sides, but only one side buttoned up. Mm -hmm. And it was usually made of like, um, um, let's say felt, but it wasn't felt. It was, um, oh, it was a real warm material. The heck? Oh, the, uh, velvet? No, the, the no. Velveteen, velvet. But you're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. Velour? Yeah. 
Yeah. Not velour. Yeah. No. I have velour tops for in. Yeah. Yeah, I had a bunch of those. Bell bottom pants. Mm -hmm. Boots. Uh, almost like a cowboy boot, but not. Okay. Uh, and were you, like I'm talking about your brothers and sisters, were you one of the only ones that was like a hippie, or were any of your other brothers and sisters? A bar boys. Barb was a hippie? Barb was a hippie. Bruce mm -hmm. was clean cut. Lou was pretty well clean cut. Right. Yeah, and the rest don't matter because they weren't in that era. Right. They were too young. Right. They were dressing what mommy and daddy yeah. didn't dress. That didn't make them wear. <laughs> and so you think back, who were your childhood heroes? Um, Steve McQueen. Oh. Uh, Chuck Connors. Chuck Connors. The Grateful Man. Okay. It was a TV series. Yeah. About Cowboy. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, who else? Dana Ross, mm -hmm. The Supremes, mm -hmm. um, The Beatles. The Rolling Stones were just coming out then too after The Beatles. Um, the Ed Sullivan Show, we used to watch The Ed Sullivan Show, The Rifleman, Gunsmoke, Howdy Doody. Captain Kangaroo, all these guys are all dead now. Um, and that was about it. And then as I got older, it was different TV shows. Because mm -hmm. I remember with you and me, you used to watch a lot of the Three Stooges. Yeah. Benny Hills, Bazaar, yeah. Dukes of Hazzard. I didn't really end up Dukes of Hazzard. Maybe that was just for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So then, uh, well, you kind of mentioned the Beatles and Stones. And the Stones. Any other, what was your favorite song by any of them? Uh, one by the Moody Blues. What was the name? Do you remember? No. <laughs> so good, I don't remember. Oh, it's been a long time since. Probably I was a hippie. <laughs> I liked all the music, actually, yeah. the Moody Blues. I guess they were my favorite band. Yeah. I liked a couple songs from the Beatles, but it wasn't into them like really heavy yeah um, there was a lot of groups back then mm -hmm. used to listen to them while I was putting my models together up in my room hmm. so you had your own room everybody had their own room no or? no no Bruce and I always shared a room mm -hmm. the girls there was usually two or three girls in a room mm -hmm. and then the babies were in a different room right no Bruce and I always shared a room okay Never, never, never had shared a room with my sisters. Yeah. No. <clears throat> did you, uh, did you have any pets? Yep. Yeah? What, what were they? Yep. We had, I remember that our first pet was a wire-haired terrier. Because his skin was blue. That's what I remember about mm -hmm. him. I forget his name. So black hair, yeah, I guess. Got yeah, he was black with blue, yeah. blue hair. Blue yeah. skin. But my favorite pet was, um... Uh, shop. It yeah. was a sheepdog, but Australian sheepdog. Because mm -hmm. I remember the the Disney movie. Um, oh boy, I can't even think of the name of it now. But they had a big sheepdog, and the one with the hair all down his eyes and everything, mm -hmm. he couldn't see. And when Bruce and I were going to buy this sheepdog, we saw it in the paper it was ten dollars. Hey, we're in. We bought it from somebody who lived down where Pat and Dave live now, down the end of Portage Road, mm -hmm. off of Stanley. We bought it down there. And when we got it home, it was so cute. He was black and white and had the black and white nose and four white paws, smart as a whip. And uh, we brought him home, but as he got bigger, and he didn't get all that big, we were expecting for the only. <laughs> so it wasn't the type of sheepdog we thought we were getting. But anyway, he turned out to be an excellent dog. Um, and then my uncle took him hunting one day, Uncle Dave. And he says he took him hunting, and he was shooting at a duck over there. As soon as the gun went off, the dog went that way. Hmm? <laughs> it scared him. Oh. And we didn't see the dog for four days. Oh. Couldn't find him. And all of a sudden, he came home. He showed up. And he came all the way home from Niagara Lake. Really? Found his way home. And then... Uh, when we used to play hockey out, when we moved to Garner Road, we used to play hockey on the road. Chef would go down the road, a ways from us, and he would 
serpentine back and forth across the road when he saw a car coming, and, and that would slow the car down because they would see the dog first mm. before he would see us kids playing hockey, eh? So he was very smart. And then one day, he, Mum thought he had gotten a fight with a rabid fox or raccoon or something, and she had the inkling that he might have had rabies. So back then, if you if you thought the dog or to find out if the dog had rabies or not, he had to go to the um, the vet or the humane society. And he had to be kept for thirty or sixty days, and it cost money. It was so much a day <clears throat> to keep him, and my dad couldn't afford that. So we had to put him down. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'll take him. He's my dog. So I got part way to the vets to have him euthanized. And I was crying so bad, I turned around and come back with him. And my brother Bruce says, well, I'll take him. So he started out and he got so far down and he was crying so bad, he brought him back. <laughs> so my dad says, I'll take him. So my dad took him, he said he cried the whole way there and they euthanized him and he cried all the way home. And that was the last pet I ever had, except for when we, uh, when you were born, we had uh, Christmas. Christmas, and then we had the midnight. Midnight, yeah. Well, there was also... Yeah, midnight buried right underneath that bench at the back. Yeah, yeah. And there's a tag on the bench that says she's there. Yeah. Yeah, I had a brass tag made up. It's it's tarnished now, but if you went out there and cleaned it, you would see when she was buried. Because yeah. <clears throat> she died here, actually. Well, she died when Vanessa lived, um, moved out of the house. Yeah. And um, I had always looked after it, and I said, Ness, this is your dog. Come and get your dog and look after it. I mean, I'm looking after your dog, and it's not even my dog, and it's, it's i got to be home for it every night. So she took it, and the very night she took it, or the next night, uh, he got really, or she got really sick and vomited and, and had diarrhea and whatnot at Vanessa's apartment. She died. Ness went out for an hour. She came back, and the dog was dead, and mm -hmm. then she brought the dog here. And when I came downstairs in the morning, Ness and the dog were laying on a blanket, and I went, oh, look, they're still sleeping. And then Ness woke up, and she started crying again. She said, where were you last night? I tried to call you about eight or nine times. The dog had died, and she said, I brought her home here. And she, So here I am at 5 o'clock in the morning outside, the man <laughs> taking a hole to bury it, and I'm thinking the neighbors are going to think I'm burying my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why she's in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, let's take a quick break. I want to get a drink and then uh, we'll continue on number 20. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What is number 20? 